I am a very passionate Vim user, and if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that to be the truth. I really like Vim, and I have tried many other text editors over the course of the last few years, and I've always come crawling back to Vim because Vim is just the best text editor for me. And I've talked about this many times on the channel before, why I think Vim is great, why it's the best text editor for me, why I've spent so much time learning Vim, and I've also talked about some of the downsides of Vim too. I'm not a rose-colored glasses kind of guy. I can easily see the flaws in all the things that I use and point them out and make videos about them. So I'm not the kind of guy who, who is like, rah, rah, everything is great about this thing that I use, and there's no bad things about it. That's just not the way I am. There is one program that is somewhat similar to Vim that gets a lot of talk in my comment sections, and that is Emacs. Now, I have tried Emacs many times over the course of the last two years. Probably five times, actually, and these aren't like I only tried them for like five minutes and said, screw this. I mean, I've tried them in significant portions of time. So at one point I used it for a whole month, and I think I've actually done that a couple times. And I've even gone so far as the last Emacs video I made saying that I'm never going to use Emacs again. This is my last Emacs video. I've said that before. Now, it turns out that that last video where I said that I was never going to make an Emacs video again, yeah, that's kind of a lie. I did make an Emacs video again. I'm going to make one today. So today, what I'm going to do is talk about five reasons why you should use Emacs. And this is coming from a perspective of a guy who doesn't use Emacs. And then I'm going to give you one reason why you shouldn't. So balance that out however you will, and we'll just go ahead and jump in. So number five, we're actually going to count these things down, is that Emacs is primarily a GUI application. So you're going to run this in a, an application that has capabilities that Vim does not. And the biggest one is going to be variable font sizes. And that means you can do things like have it so that your markdown actually shows what markdown looks like. So you'll have big headers and links that look, look like links and images and things like that. All that stuff is possible inside of Emacs. It's not possible inside of regular Vim or even NeoVim. So with Emacs being a GUI application or primarily a GUI application, you can do things inside of it that you can't really do inside of Vim. So that is number five on the list. It's very simple and it does apply to a lot of people because Markdown is one of the primary reasons why I would ever use Emacs and I know a lot of people are like that too. And there are other applications for variable font sizes than just Markdown, of course. Number four on the list is that if you use something like Doom Emacs, and it seems to be fairly popular, it comes out of the box very close to what you would get with an IDE. It has very good language support for things like C, C++, Python, Lisp, obviously, Lua, things like that. So if you are a developer and you want to have a IDE experience, Emacs does a better job of that out of the box than Vim does. It's not even really all that close. And that is especially true if you're using something like Doom Emacs, which has a lot of stuff enabled that vanilla Emacs doesn't. And obviously it has way more stuff built in to help you program than Vim does. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do all the same stuff inside of Vim when it comes to having language support and having linters and things like that. All that stuff is 100% possible in Vim, but you have to build it in with plugins or whatever. It doesn't come out of the box. So number three on the list is that it has great buffer management. Now, Vim also does a good job with managing buffers. So first, let's just explain. A buffer is simply an open document of some kind, whether it's a configuration file or it's a, you know, a, a project file, whatever. And it, for a buffer to be a buffer, it has to be part of the same, same session. So with Vim, it's very easy to open up a new buffer in a new tab, or even if you don't use a new tab, it's just open and you can switch between the buffers. You know, you, you can very easily manage your buffers inside of Vim. And there are obviously a lot of plugins that help you with this as well if you want to have more discrete and obvious control over your buffer situation in Vim. In Emacs, all that stuff is built in. You can very easily switch between buffers. You can do tabs if you want to use tabs. You can manage your buffers 
outside of the buffer that you're in. So if you want to kill a random buffer down the line, you could do so very easily with a key binding. Buffer management is just really good in Emacs, and it has been for a very long time. Now, obviously, in order to do all that stuff, you have to learn the key bindings, but I can't really dock Emacs points simply because it has a lot of key bindings to learn because Vim is the same way. You have to learn a certain amount of key bindings in both Emacs and Vim in order to be comfortable at all, and it's just kind of the way things go. Number two on the list is also one that kind of applies to both Vim and Emacs, but I think Emacs does it better in a lot of ways. So, and that is that Emacs is very keyboard centric. Now, I know what you Vim guys are saying. Vim is also very keyboard centric. So, they're both very much like this. But where Emacs wins, and this is just my opinion, is that it wins in support for key chords. So, both of them support key chords, but out of the box, Emacs just does it better. It has a lot of them pre configured. It has the ability to have a lot of key bindings associated with other key bindings and you get to learn different combinations and they're all kind of pre-set up for you, especially if you're going to, again, use something like Doom Emacs. A lot of the bindings that you'll learn are key chords. Vanilla Emacs also has a lot of key chords in it as well, obviously. So if you like to have very minute control over how your text editor slash ID slash whatever works, Key chords will allow you to do that much more effectively and efficiently than you would without them. Now, like I said, Vim does support key chords out of the box, but most of the key bindings that you'll find in Vim are just simple key bindings. There are some key chords set up out of the box, but for the most part, you'll just find regular key bindings. And setting them up in Emacs through configuration, I don't know why it feels this way to me, but it's just a little bit easier inside of Emacs than it is in Vim. So... I enjoy the key chord situation on Emacs better than I do on Vim. It's pretty close, but it's still, I prefer on the Emacs side. Now, the number one reason why you should use Emacs instead of Vim is org mode. Now, this is something that I've not tried all that much, and a lot of my awe and interest in org mode is based on the reputation that it has from other YouTubers and other Emacs users. Org mode basically allows you to do anything that you want to do. It can help you build a website. It can help you organize your configuration files. It will help you if you write a lot of like a novel or something like that. If you write Markdown regularly, it does a ton of stuff and allows you to, as the name implies, organize the files that you play around in. It does a very good, it's kind of like VimWiki on the Vim side, although it's much more powerful than VimWiki. Basically, what it allows you to do, on the base level at least, I'm sure it does a lot more, but it allows you to create a hierarchy of links to inside of your document, outside of your document, and it just kind of organizes everything inside of a document or a file, and that means that you can do any number of things. It also has things like code blocks, and the ability to compile from an org mode. So if you were to, say, create a program or a website or whatever, you could translate all of your organized document, which is basically just like a markdown document, into an HTML document very easily. So org mode is very, very powerful, and I'm sure I'm not doing a very good job of explaining why it's so good, but there are tons of tutorials and stuff like that on YouTube, on the internet, elsewhere, explaining the power and joy of org mode. And it's just not really anything that Vim can compete with without doing a ton of extra work. Okay, so those are the five reasons why you should try Emacs. There are probably several other ones out there that I didn't mention. Some of the things that I've read about Emacs will say that it's faster than Vim. I don't know that that's actually true or not. I haven't really seen a big speed difference. Some things that I've read say that Emacs is more customizable than Vim. I'm not sure that that's even true, simply because both have very robust plugin systems, and you can basically do anything with a plugin on either side. Now, obviously, you have the ability to do things in a GUI that you don't in a terminal, so, you know, Emacs does have that advantage, but still, both are very customizable, so I don't think one wins over another there. So, there are other things that I could have added to this list, but I chose these five. So let's move on to the last part of the video. The one reason why I don't think you should use Emacs. And this is one that I've talked about before, so this is not going to come, to come as a surprise to anybody. But the one reason why you should not use Emacs is that it's bloated. Now, 
Hold on, Emacs guys. I know that that's not the right term because Emacs isn't technically bloated. It's a ELISP interpreter. That's what it does. That's really all it does. And then the people who have developed Emacs have, have built stuff on top of it. That's what they've done. And Emacs is a suite of the stuff that has been built on top of this interpreter. That's the way it is, right? It's kind of, it's not a perfect metaphor, but it's kind of like System D. System D is a collection of stuff. Emacs is also a collection of stuff. You can kind of compare those two things, but that's beside the point. Really, the better way to put this, other than the whole bloat argument, is that Emacs comes with a lot of stuff. And if all you're looking for is a text editor, if that's really all you're truly looking for, then Emacs is going to be way more than you'll ever need. It has a ton of extra development stuff in there that you're never going to probably need. And it has a ton of, you know, plugins and stuff like that that are available to you that you'll never need. It has, you know, games in there that you'll never need. It has an email client. It has a torrent client, stuff like that. Now, obviously, a lot of that stuff you have to turn on, but it's there, right? And it has capabilities far beyond just a text editor. So... When it comes to if you are just a person looking for a text editor, Emacs may be a little bit heavy for you. And it also might have a learning curve that is more intensive than what you're looking for. So Emacs may not be for you if all you're looking for is a text editor. Now, if I'm being objective here, Vim has some of the same complaints. Now, I am 100% on the side of saying that Vim out of the box is way less encumbered with features than Emacs is. If all you're using is regular Vim out of the box with no plugins, it doesn't have all the frills and development stuff that Emacs has out of the box. It just doesn't. So if you're looking for something that is more minimal, right out of the box, Vim is there. But a lot of things that I complain about Emacs with, the you know the, e the email client and the torrent client and all this stuff... A lot of that stuff has to be enabled, right? It, so you can consider them plugins. They're basically plugins. And while they're not exactly the same thing as a Vim plugin, Vim also has those things that you can enable. Now, I don't think that there's an email client in Vim. You know, I don't think that there's a torrent client in Vim. But it has a similar ecosystem of stuff that you could add on to it. So in theory, you could compare them and say that they both have the equal chance to have extra stuff on top of them that you don't really need. And... I suppose that that is an okay argument. I would probably argue that because Vim is more simple out of the box in terms of not having extra features, it probably wins the crown of being better for new users. But I'm super biased there because I like Vim. The real argument for this, if you're just a simple person looking for a simple text editor, neither of these two is probably your better option. You'll probably want to go with something like Micro or something like Nano. Both of those are very, very simple text editors that don't have all the cruft that both Emacs and Vim have along with them, even just out of the box. Now, neither one are as extensible as Vim or Emacs, so if you're looking to do some more like development work, Micro and Nano may not be your best choice, but they are really good choices if all you're looking for is a text editor. And I know that I make fun of people who use Nano. That's just me being trying to be funny, not succeeding at being funny. Nano is a perfectly fine text editor, and if that's all you need, Nano is a good option. Also, Micro is a more advanced version of Nano. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more than Nano, but less than Vim or Emacs, Micro might be a good option for you as well. So those are the reasons on both sides. And... The question then comes down to, Matt, are you switching to Emacs again? The answer to that is no, I'm not switching to Emacs again. I just, Emacs is like a pretty girl. Now, I, this is a really weird metaphor. I'm sorry about this, but it's it's a pretty girl that you know is really unattainable, right? Like, you know that you're never going to be with that girl, but you want to be. Like, Emacs is very attractive, mostly because of org mode. Org mode has such a reputation around it as being so amazing that you want to go use it. But then you realize she's also really high maintenance, you know? She she needs, you know, a, a six-figure income from her, her her man in order to be happy with the, the lifestyle that she, wanted, that she wants to lead. So, uh, yeah, she's un unattainable for me. That's the reason why I don't you know, choose Emacs. <laughs> that, that is a... 
either it's either the best metaphor I've ever come up with or the worst. I'm not sure which one. You let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I I know that this is going to be a very interesting comment section. So you you Emacs guys and you Vim guys have at it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You guys can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey if you want to challenge me to a duel over Emacs or Vim. You can probably better do that on Mastodon. So head on over there and follow me. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for YouTube and Libera Pay will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all just amazing. So thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.